The tooth segmentation tool can be used for segmenting single teeth as surface models so that we can better understand their dimensions and their position in the data. And also we can, for example, examine how close they are to a nerve or to an implant. Also, as surface models, we're able to move around uh, the teeth in the data and we can also export them out of Romexis as single SDL files. So let's see how the segmentation process is done. I will first uh, delete this example tooth that I had segmented earlier. So I'm just selecting uh, this tooth here in the offset browser and I'm using this Trascan icon in order to delete it. And then let's restart the process. So first, it would be good to align these slice views so that we have a good view on the tooth that we're going to segment. And then we can activate the tooth segmentation tool here in the toolbar. And here we get the tooth chart and we can pick uh, the number for the tooth that we're going to segment, 35 in this case, and then we can do the segmentation. So the segmentation is done by painting all the volume that will be part of the tooth and that will become as the surface model. So this mouse cursor works as a painter tool and we can just start painting by keeping our left mouse button down and by tracking with our mouse. And like we see, the color flows uh, partly automatically, so it also automatically recognizes uh, the borders of the tooth. So it could be a good practice to first paint uh, the tooth in the sagittal and uh, coronal views. And like said, everything that is painted will become part of the surface model representing the tooth. So if any paint is uh, in the neighboring teeth, we can remove that with right mouse button. So left mouse button for painting, right for removing the paint. Also, we can resize uh, the tool cursor by keeping Alt down on the keyboard and by using our mouse wheel. So we can paint or remove finer details as well. So after painting the tooth here in the sagittal and coronal views, we can still use this axial view uh, for verifying that paint is covering all the root uh, of the tooth. So here in the axial view, we could easily add or remove paint when needed. So uh, when the segmentation is ready, uh, we can just click on finish in order to calculate the segmentation. So now uh, we have the segmented tooth here in the 3D rendered view and also in the slice views. And then we can just close this tool wizard uh, by clicking on close. And now we can see our segmented tooth here in the object browser. So this is where we can manage it. We can hide and show it uh, through this uh, eye icon here. Uh, we could change the color uh, by clicking on this color box. So for example, if we have several teeth uh, segmented, we might uh, recognize them better if they are of different colors. And also uh, the tooth uh, number that we picked in the wizard shows here next to each uh, segmented tooth. And uh, like I showed earlier, we can also delete uh, the tooth here using the opposite browser. And then if we would like to lock uh, the tooth in place so that we don't uh, accidentally move it around here in the data, uh, we could select it and we could use this lock icon here. But instead, if we would actually like to move the tooth uh, in the data, we can deactivate uh, the lock. And then let me just deactivate this move rotate volume here. We can just simply grab uh, the tooth uh, in the slice views or we could use also this 3D rendered view uh, for moving the tooth. So uh, in order to move the tooth here in the 3D rendered view, we would need to keep uh, control and shift down on the keyboard. So these controls are for windows. So control and shift down on the keyboard, and then we could use our left mouse button in order to uh, move the tooth around here in the data. And the same control and shift down and uh, by using our right mouse button, we can also rotate uh, the tooth. And now if we would like to reset uh, the position uh, for this tooth, uh, we could open this uh, properties for the tooth. Uh, this can be found here in the object browser. So we will just open this wrench icon. And here we can find this move tab. 
where we can actually have the controls uh, for moving the tooth and we can reset to the, the tooth uh, to original position by using this button here. And now let's close that. Now we could actually lock it in place so that we don't accidentally move it again. And like mentioned in the beginning, we can also export these segmented teeth as STL files uh, from Romexis. So for that, we could use, for example, this export objects function here in the upper toolbar. So before using that, let's make sure that all the teeth that we're going to export are set visible here in the object browser so that we can also see them here uh, in the views. And then let's uh, activate the export objects uh, dialog. And here we can either select uh, all the segmented teeth as a group, or then if we would have several teeth, we could select them one by one. And then we could determine uh, whether we export them as one or separate SDL files and save them on the computer. Another option would be to export uh, the segmented teeth uh, together with the volume. And for that, we could use the normal volume export. So here uh, we have this option of including segmented teeth. Uh, and by selecting this, uh, we could export them together with the volume and they would also uh, be exported as separate STL files uh, together with the DICOM uh, volume file. Uh, we have here also another option uh, for removing segmented teeth uh, from data. So let's select that and see uh, how the volume uh, looks like. So this function creates a new volume uh, where the tooth is missing from the data.